Right, and hello. Oh, ouch. Just hit my elbow. Uh, hello, everybody. Peter here for the something episode of a Peter's content free podcast. La dee dee da. La dee dee da. That's the part where I say the, ep- the season and volume number series. Um, for some reason, I just thought of the Encyclopedia Brit- Britannica. Um, at, growing up, we never had the Encyclopedia Britannica. We had the World Book Encyclopedia, which I, at one point, in one of my... Uh, there was just this point in my life where I kept on setting these big goals for myself that I got more excited about the goals than actually finish, you know, following through with any of them. Uh, and my goal was to, you know, of course, read the Encyclopedia uh, I, I didn't get very far. I didn't even start at the beginning. I think I, no, no. I might have started at A, read a little bit of A, and then switched to G or M or something. Read a little bit of that. It's pretty interesting, right? They, the encyclopedias are very readable. It's not dry uh, and dusty, literarily, in the same way a dictionary is. Uh, but I got maybe, a, you know, 1% of 1% of the way through. The, that, the world book, I mean, a whole big set of encyclopedias like that that takes up a whole shelf on a book bookcase. That's what they're designed to do, I think, more than to actually be looked at. But no, I actually remember there was a point in my life before the internet, or even during the internet and before Wikipedia was a big thing. Actually, before Wikipedia was a thing, we actually had a CD called Encarta which was a computer, our computer version of the encyclopedia, but we never really looked things up on Encarta. Maybe occasionally, we usually looked it up on World Book, I mean, on the actual book, on the bookshelf. And a surprising number of things are on there. I guess another reason they're so big is because they do actually have a lot of stuff in there. I'm sure someone has done a visualization of if... If, if the information on Wikipedia was put into an in-print encyclopedia, you know, how many bookshelves would that take up? How many tomes with golden... Gold, what's it called when you have the gold paint on the edges of the, pa- the pages? I think ours had that. I liked that a lot. I could be imagining that, though. But more interesting, I remember about this, in Carta, the World Book thing, this, uh, this encyclopedia we had on a CD that we'd play with. That's what we did. We would play with it on the computer. It had like these cool learning games and uh, this thing where you could pretty much grow a tree by by like setting a variable and um, it, how ma- however many times you, you would, a little line would grow up and then it would split and it would either split twice or thrice and you could like change that number. And you could see how, how quick the tree would get bushy. I'm sure there was some other thing we were supposed to learn from that about, you know, species splitting off in evolution or something like that. But I, I don't remember what, it, what we were really supposed to learn. I just remember it was cool to look at the different ways we could make a tree grow. And it was colorful. And actually, I feel like maybe leaves did appear on it at the end. But I also could be imagining that. I also could be imagining that. Anyways, like I said, uh, that's the introduction this is Peter's content-free podcast, where, uh, regrettably, I have no material prepared beforehand. I guess almost every other podcast in the world has that up on me. Or maybe I have that up on them. The only thing I have prepared beforehand is this cup of coffee. Mm. It's good. I, um, this is how I make coffee. I... Just put it in the coffee maker. In other news, I was driving home the other night. This is a bit of a sad story. Something I do need to get out of my system and address here on my YouTube channel. I am uh, my hardened criminal now. I was driving home the other night. It was a chill, chill evening. Low 70s, maybe. I had the windows down. And, uh, yeah, I was just cruising. It was maybe close to midnight. I was the only one on the highway. No one in sight ahead of me or behind me. The speed limit there is 70 miles an hour. Also, nothing I'm saying here uh, can be used against me in a court of law because it's all just, it's just a story that may or may not have happened. 
It did, but I'm joking when I say that, as far as a court of law is considered. I'm joking. It's just a made-up fairy tale story. But I was cruising down the road at somehow 83 miles an hour, which is totally unlike me. I never go that fast in a 70. I usually just do 80, because everyone drives 80 miles an hour, and I'm sure it would be downright dangerous to go the speed limit. If I, if I was driving 70 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone, people would be figuratively tripping over me in their haste to, you know, change lanes and swerve around me and stuff. Unfortunately, I didn't have that good of an excuse at the time because I uh, was the only one on the road and I was just cruising. But maybe, I mean, that's, maybe I don't even need an excuse in that case because I'm just cruising and it's a wide open road and the heartland of America, right? Just a guy letting the wind flow through his hair, putting the windows down, letting the radio blare, have a little fun. Like, what's the big deal? And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this car on the right-hand side of the road, the lights just, just the brake, like the, I could, it just popped up out of nowhere. Brake lights, boom. I zoom by it, look in the rearview mirror. My heart drops. My stomach drops even further. It's down in my knees. And I see those blue lights. I see it pull up behind me. I slowly pull over. And I'm just like, well, this is it. This is how it happens. I've never gotten a speeding ticket before. I feel like I should have maybe gotten one a long time ago. But I haven't gotten one before. Anyway, so I pull over and the guy, guy comes up to the window. It's a state trooper, you know, with a nice flat brimmed hat. Looking very crisp. Looking very crisp. And I'm just sitting there, and as it, when he comes up to the window, I'm, I'm leaned over in the glove compartment, ruffling through it, hoping that my registration's in there somewhere. I know it's in there somewhere, I just don't know where it is. There's like a lot of other crap in there. And uh, he says, so, oh, clocked you at 83. Uh, do you have a reason you were going so fast? And I look, I turn around and look down. I think I'd probably turned around and looked at him before that by... I had already, already spun my head, but then my mind, my mind really started spinning at that question. What in the world could he mean by, do you have a reason for that? Are there some, are there some magic words I could be saying at this point to get me out of this? In the past, I have been pulled over, but I usually somehow charm or blunder my way out of any sort of ticket. I just get written warnings and stuff. Uh, but in this case, I just wasn't ready for such a, such a blunt question. Asking me for an excuse. And I wanted to ask him, like, I don't know, what should I say in this situation? What do, pe what do people that get out of tickets usually say in this situation? In your experience, officer, sir, if I may be so bold to ask. But, uh... You know, like, what, what could I say? Could I say, I'm, pre I'm, I'm pregnant. I, I have to pee. I, my, my chickens are on fire. I don't know. So anyways, all I could come up with was, I don't know. I just want to get home, I guess. That's what I said to him. Maybe the lamest thing ever, but also the most honest thing ever. And <laughs> so he took my license and registration back to the car and he sat there typing it in and I was looking at him in the rearview mirror and I was sitting there eating some chips and <laughs> drinking coffee and I think he I don't know if that doesn't help my case at all if he looks up at me and I'm he sees me in my because you can like see people in your own rearview mirror you look up at the car look at their rearview mirror in the side view you know and you can see them do you think that hurts my chances if he if he sees me snacking away I was like I was like nerve, uh, you know, like stress eating, you know, like, tuk, tuk, tuk. I, don't, I don't think I was that stressed out. It's like, whatever, you know, it's like, what it, it is what it is. You, you guys like that saying? It is what it is. I do not. Anyway, so I was eating and he came back up and I was sipping on my coffee and uh, I don't know. he gave me a ticket. He's like, well, here's your ticket. And he didn't actually tell me how much it was. He's just like, the amount is down at the bottom. Like, why would he do that? Like, that's all anyone wants to know, is how much this is going to cost. And uh, he's like, your court date is... And my court date is way out in December. 
what is it, August right now? August, September, October, November, December. That's four months from now. Are they particularly that many people? Are the courts backed up? What's going on? And so I asked him, I was like, are, is, is it probably better to go to court? Like, what's the purpose of that? He's like, well, you could just pay it. And uh, I looked down there and it was $213. There's like a ticket. And then there's also tacked on top of that some sort of ticket fee. Like the ticket itself was only like $175. And there was like a fee. They, they fee you. You know, it's like some sort of penalty for getting ticketed. There's a cost of speeding and a cost of getting caught speeding or something like that. I'm not sure how it works. So it's 213. He's like, so you can go in and uh, maybe they can work with you. I did put down here that you were very polite and courteous. It's like, oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. It's like, so I just, uh, he's like, all right. He's like, go sit, drive, drive safe, sir. I was like, you too, okay. So I went home fast, you know, because after that I was nervous. My nerves were like the edge of a knife, and I was just like cruising, and I wa. Um, I e could have easily gotten two tickets that night, I think. It would have it would have been like some kind of sign. How many? No, two tickets. And I wonder how how many signs it would have how many tickets it would have taken before I thought it was an actual sign and what what a sign is exactly. One Oops. I just tried to talk and sip coffee at the same time. If one ticket isn't a sign, I don't know what is. That's about as clear as you can get. Also, the actual speed limit signs. Those are signs. That's pretty obvious. Mm. But, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I mean, that was 13 over. I'm just glad that no cops see me driving on those roads in the back country, right? The speed limit there is 55, 45. People will tailgate me, be like two inches behind me. They're like 80 miles per hour on those ones too, and I'm driving 35 over. And I'm people, I'm not still driving fast enough for some people. It's crazy out there. It's a lawless land where I'm sure I'll still get pulled over one day. It's not good. Oh, this is all just a made up story, by the way. Um, also, for the first time in a very, very long time, maybe. This week was a week of firsts, perhaps. For the first time in maybe 20 years, I took a nap. No, <laughs> why did I say nap? <laughs> this week, I took a bath. That's what I meant to say, like in a bathtub. Like a bath in a bathtub. I have a, a bad history with baths, mostly because, I don't know, my mom didn't really encourage us to take a lot of baths when I was little because she was afraid I would... Uh, I'm hearing noises outside the window. I think it's just raining. Like big, big heavy drops splatting against the window. I'm gonna lift the blind up now and it better not be a monster out there. Okay, I can't see anything at all because the lights are on inside and they're not on outside. So I could have just stared right at a monster's face right now and I wouldn't have known. Let me look on my phone. Is it raining? That's such a, such a cool thing to do. Look on your phone to see if it's raining where you are instead of, it says it's clear. I'll be right back. Just a second, guys. Okay. Okay, I'm back. I went outside. I didn't see anything. Really weird. Just, just like a regular night. Dark. Weird n noises in the distance. My, my rooster is um, sleeping on a table in the shop now. Instead of in the chicken coop. I don't know what's going on with the chickens. <sighs> I just don't know. Anyways, I took a bath in a ba in my bathtub because I was having like a really bad migraine. I couldn't get rid of it. Could not get rid of it. And I was out of my uh, sumatriptan, which is the like the migraine medicine that the doctor prescribed to me. I was out of it. I have more now. Um, but and the only thing that was 
I give me any amount of, like I tried to go to bed, you know, I was drinking, you know, like all the things that everyone tells me, you know, like drink more water, you know, try to sleep it off. I was just writhing and turning in bed, just writhing and writhing and drinking water. I drank so much water. I tried to sleep so much and I don't know, everything. And the only thing that really gives me any momentary amount of relief. Uh, and then I was, what was, um, was, was taking a shower and just letting like the hot water beat down on the back of my head, you know, like that. And just like it, so I don't know if it doesn't hurt or I just can't feel it. I don't know. So I popped like four ibuprofen. And then I thought, I tried sitting down in the shower, but it wasn't working very well. And, um, so then I thought, I saw like the little thing, the little switch to plug the, plug the tub, right? I was like, huh, I already, I already took a shower, went to bed, came back and got in the shower again, just hoping there was still hot water left. So I, I knew I was already clean, because that's one thing that already always kind of put me off about baths was like your own nasty body water. It's still a little bit weird even after showering, but it's not the end of the world. So I thought, huh, let me plug it up. And, uh, hey, I'm going to tell you, it was real nice, actually. Nice hot water. I slooped down in it. It was only about the same level. I didn't fill it up, like, all the way or anything because it was the hot water was starting to run out, and I didn't want to dilute the hot water that was in there with, like, lukewarm water or less than hot water. I was lying in there on my back. And it was pretty much just at the level where it was just starting to go over the top of my torso. You know, so I don't know how many inches that is. And and I was um I was kind of like my legs were like frog legged up up out of the water and my feet were like around the faucet sort of thing, and so the back of my head was up against the other end, away from the faucet, and uh so my head was down in the hot water and I had like and, you know, I've got that speaker in my bathroom. I've got, I had some Tame Impala playing on there. But since my ears were underwater, I could only hear, like, some faint bass lines from that. And it was actually, like, really soothing. Everything was just right suddenly. And I feel like maybe, like, the slope of the bathtub there where I, and the back of my head was pressing against it was something, something to do with how that worked. It was just, like... Or maybe it was just like the hot water and the ibuprofen was working. I don't know what it was, but I suddenly started feeling so good. Like it was working and I started feeling all sleepy finally. It was all my pain and anguish was being washed away in the bath. It was great. So I stayed there for a while and then I got up because I didn't want to drown or something if I fell asleep. And I woke up to gulping down huge chunks of water and stuff. And I went to bed and I slept and it slept and it was good. And I woke up feeling good. And the next day, that reminded me, me taking a bath reminded me that I had got, you guys remember how I talked about that, uh, that True Rest float spa before? Where you go and you sleep in those pods. You don't, you're not supposed to sleep in them. I fall asleep. <laughs> I think you're just supposed to somehow, I, I personally, I find it hard to believe that no one falls asleep in those. That there's anyone that doesn't fall asleep. This is so soothing. Um, but then I got remembered about that. I, I got reminded of it. I remembered it. And I thought, oh yeah, didn't... <laughs> I've only been there once. But the one time I went there, I got I bought a membership, which allows me like a, a couple of... Like one or two free floats every month. Not free, but already paid for <laughs> floats every month. And uh, I haven't been going because as soon as I did that, I promptly moved out of Wilmington. And I haven't been going. So I thought, hey, i got to go back into Wilmington for some other stuff tonight. Why don't I swing by there and have a float? Uh, so I called up. I was like, yeah, I think I'm thinking about having a float. And they're like, all right, we can work you in. Uh, so I went in. I floated. But the weird thing was, it had been so long since I floated, that I couldn't really remember like all the procedures. Like, you know, shower here, put these earplugs in like that. You know, press this button then, you know, for the, the light, the... The, the music, the this, the that, and all this stuff. Like, there was kind of like a little bit of procedure to it. And I couldn't really remember all this stuff. They just whisked me away right into it. They're like, hi, Peter. Here's your here's your pod in right here. You get, like, your own private room with all this delicious mood lighting and everything, right? And uh, I was just, like, stuck in there. I'm like, okay, let me think carefully. Don't, don't let me... I don't want to forget some... Uh, like, I'm trusting that there isn't some step that if I forget it, 
I'll drown, right? Pretty much the main step, the main thing you don't want to do is pee in the pod. If you pee in the pod, it costs you like $200 because they have to swap out the water. Because there's like 2,000 pounds of soap in there, I mean salt in there. Because that's how you float so nicely in the pods. And you got to shower before you get in, and then you want to shower after you get out because your hair, you're all salty. And weirdly, the salt, it makes, why does the salt water make you all slimy? What's the scientific explanation to that? Huh? Huh? Scientists? Huh? Tell me. It makes you feel all slimy, which is actually good. I don't know, I like it. Um, I went in there, and I think I did it pretty much right. Except I forgot the earplugs. And I didn't realize that until after I got out and I saw the earplugs lying there on the bench and I thought, oh yeah, the earplugs. I remember they stressed those. They stressed how important those earplugs were the last time I came. I'm like, but, but nothing bad happened. I was just like lying there in the water. I get in water all the time without earplugs in. It's fine. But here I am a day or two later and my ears are feeling super weird. Like I blow my nose sometimes, I blow my nose and it's this weird crackling noise in my ears and sometimes if I just breathe weird, I hear the same weird crackling noise and it's frustrating because it's not like, I don't know what's going on. Is there like weird salt crystals growing on my eardrums or is there really water back there? Or I don't know what's going on because usually if there's water in your ear, you can like feel it and you know, you like hit your head to one side or clap it against a pillow or something and then eventually you feel it come out and it's all warm and satisfying because your body's been warming up that one little drop of water. Your body, your whole, it's like head temperature, right? It's satisfying. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully it'll sort itself out. I feel like if it was super dangerous, they wouldn't let you do it. Uh, or they would have more big warning signs about putting in earplugs. And the... The only big warning sign they had in those spa rooms were is, is it said shower before getting in and it said emergency phone at front desk. Which I'm just now real. Well, actually, I'm not sure what that means. I don't understand what that means. If I have an emergency in the spa, like if I slip and fall, like what emergency? And what's, I'm just trying to figure out what emergency I would run out to the front desk and use their phone. I can't, I can't figure it out. I want, I feel like every emergency that could happen in that room, I would want a phone there so I could call the front desk and have them come help me or have them call for someone, you know? There is a little intercom thing in the pod which I've always been, I've never pressed that. Even when this last time I went, I didn't stay in there the whole time. It's supposed to be a one hour float, which is a really long time, but probably not long enough for some people who are really into that sort of thing. I'm not really into it. I don't know why I do it. Maybe the novelty, which I think is a huge selling point for them in general. It's a huge selling point. Floating in darkened, watery, salty pods, you know, the sensory deprivation thing. It's kind of soothing, but this time I think I only went for like 45 or 50 minutes. And then like, I, I got like a weird, started to get like the, the leading edge, I think. Maybe a panic attack or some weird claustrophobic feelings. Like I, st first of all, I got, started getting restless for about five or 10 minutes and I couldn't lie there still any longer. I started moving my arms and legs when you're just lying there, right, and you don't move anything, you you can't feel anything. Um, you, 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 like you don't touch any of the edges of the pod or anything. You're just floating there, right? But if you, you if you move a little bit, you can start feeling the edges. And you can kind of be, slowly balance back and forth between the sides of the pod and stuff like that. And anyways, I, I started like fooling around a little bit like that, just like bouncing around, flexing my legs and stuff. And like it's so quiet in there because every now and then I would like swallow like that or close my teeth, and at that th those levels of silence. Just my teeth touching sounded like huge, hollow tombstones clanging together. And the sound was like reverberating out across the universe. And it was almost deafening. Just my teeth touching each other. 
just that, I guess, just that level of sensory deprivation where any little thing becomes overpowering. Anyway, so I got out early. And so, but I didn't mind because they have like a little, sh they have a shower in there. It's a really nice shower. So I just took like a longer shower, which was fine with me because I like showers, especially when you don't have to worry about running up the, the bills, you know, the water or the electricity or whatever. It was okay. I, I still enjoyed it. I did. And so then I went to the front desk after and I was like, yeah, so I'm moving. I told her I was moving. Not that I had already moved. I was like, I'm moving, so I need to cancel my membership. It's just not convenient convenient anymore. Um, really, I should have canceled my membership a long time anyway, since I'm, you know, not into this sort of thing. But I don't know why I got the membership in the first place. I guess it's just because, like, you're there. You're excited about it. You're like, they, they kind of, like, they're good salesmen, you know. They talk you into it with, like, the, the value and... Like, it's so cheap and good for you, and it's not that cheap, and I don't know how good it is for you, but they do the whole chiropractor thing with, like, like it, how they tell you it really only starts paying off after, like, the fifth session or something, <laughs> something crazy like that. But, um, I don't know. I feel like, like me, there. I wonder how many people they have that are like me that are subscribed or had memberships that don't ever come in for floats. That's ideal for a business. People who pay for the service and don't use the service. That's perfect. That's wonderful. That's what I need people, that's what I need people to do with like, like Patreon, right? I think I have a lot of people on my Patreon who signed up for it and kind of forgot about it. Cause sometimes I like, I do giveaways and stuff there. And then I like send people a message saying, Hey, you want a giveaway? And then they message me back six months later saying, Oh, I never check these messages, you know, thanks so much. Is it too late? I'm like, no, it's not too late. I'll send it to you. But so if you if you're interested in signing up for something and forget about it, you know, just kind of like a sign up and forget, subscribe and forget. What's the catchy way to say that? This is a really good thing to sign up for and forget. I'm talking about my Patreon here. This is good. It's good. Just pile on, pile on. It's a tiny bit, tiny bit for you, big amount for me if enough people do it. Okay. This, this podcast has made, been made possible in part by me and you. There, a little advertisement. Anyways, what I'm saying is I canceled my m membership. And she said I had rollover floats. So it turns out I canceled my membership and I still have five more floats, which I kept on thinking were free floats. I'm like, whoa. Five free floats, but really, they're just prepaid floats that I paid for and just never used. So I should probably go use them since I already paid for them. Maybe I'll get really good at floating and get addicted to it and sign up again. I'll, I'll be out there floating every week, twice a week, every day. And I won't be able to function without floating for an hour every day in an enclosed, darkened, salt water filled pod. I'll be that guy. That's just what, I was just playing out a scenario in my head. That's all. Um, oof, I almost paused it right there. See, it takes a lot longer if I pause it to try to think of more things to say. Because then I sit around thinking, wow, I can't think of more things to say. I know this is maybe the most common thing for me to talk about in my podcast. May not be able to think about things to say besides coffee. Uh, I am drinking coffee right now. Still, uh, this Daft Punk mug is maybe my most one of my most faithful possessions. I use it so much and I've had so many other mugs come and go in my life. Um but this one's just working so well. It is. It's just the right size, shape, color. Black coffee in a black mug, you can't tell when it's dirty. Like black socks. Black mugs they never get dirty. The longer you use them, the crustier they get. Sometimes I think of the dish soap, but something inside me says, don't scrub it yet. Mm. Lately I've been, uh, they don't have, I've been drinking Pete's coffee. I buy it pre- 
pre-ground in the packet, you know, from the grocery store. But uh, for, a, for most of the time, I've been recording these pod, podcasts. Obviously, I'm, a, I'm attracted to Pete's Coffee because the name bears a stark resemblance to my own. I don't know if that's their main selling point, like appeal to all the people named Peter, Pete, and Pete out there. Peterson, maybe. But it works for me. It jumped out for me at the shelf. I mean, from the shelf at me. Because do you think I'm getting worse at talking? I keep on getting my words mixed around. I hope not. I feel like I still have a lot of talking to do. I have no idea what I'm going to say, but I feel like I've just chipped at the tip of the iceberg as far as things to say. As far as possible combinations of things to say. There's a lot of them out there. Maybe by saying some words out of order, I'm going ahead and getting rid, you know, marking them off the the possibility board of possible things to say and ways to say them. By saying them wrong, I'm saying, there's, there's a, a larger likelihood that I'm saying things that have never been said before. I know they're not very w- worthwhile or valuable just on their own because they're total nonsense, but maybe they are worthwhile just because, uh, just, you know, by sheer novelty. But, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm drinking Pete's Big Bang Coffee now. I think that's what it's called. So, you know, it probably has the word bold in there somewhere, and a, a blend, and you know those kinds of words they like to destri- describe coffee. It's, uh, it's bitter, and it's warm, and it's somehow very comforting. And it makes me feel a little bit more alive and alert, and I like it. I do. Also, I have a terrible confession. I, um, these, last time I streamed, I think, I showed my, I showed my fingernail clipper collection. I'm a little bit ashamed at that also, because I, well, I don't know how to say it, so I'm just going to say it. Look, I bought, except for the th- my th- except for three of them which i bought just for general usage over the years i actually i lose a lot of fingernail cl- clippers so th- some of them come and go but some of these other weirder ones i i bought them all at once right because i thought i liked the idea of having a collection of fingernail clippers just because they seem like a cool thing to collect because there's so many different ones that i've seen like sometimes i say hey i'm out traveling somewhere I'm like, hey can i follow borrow your fingernail clippers i you know, do yeah. You know, well, I need to trim my fingernails, and they clip them, and they say, "Oh yeah, sure." And out, out from wherever they pull their fingernail clippers, um, they pull them and they hand them to me. I'm like, "Wow, these look so different than any fingernail clippers I've ever had or even seen before," and it just alarms me. You know, the vast variety that must be out there. Uh, and I really like that, and so I thought this might, might be a cool thing to collect. But the collection I showed on stream. Except for the three I had already. There's five new ones. I bought those all at the same time. Uh, which, for me, seems a little bit disingenuous because I feel like a collection you maybe shouldn't buy all at the same time. It should be something that kind of trickles in over time. Uh, you know, like, as you follow your 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 hobby. You know, if you, you know, someone that collects stamps and they're like, hey, look at my stamp collection. If it's like a really cool stamp collection they're proud of, they probably didn't buy them all at once. It's something that they picked out and chose over, you know, over a few years as they saw ones they liked and invested in them. You know what I mean? But how I consider this is I bought a few. I needed to jumpstart the collection. I needed to start it somehow. Um, and I don't regret it. I think it's a good start. It's a start. Before I had no start, I just had my regular fingernail clippers. And something I've also realized is I usually dislike my fingernail clippers, like they're not comfortable to hold. Sometimes they have uh, rough cuts, um, but I never do anything about it. I never got on my way to invest in better fingernail clippers that are more ergonomic and clip more cleanly, cleanly, clean, cleanslier. Anyways, so I have a few now, and, I, and I've already formed opinions on them. Which ones I like more, which ones I like less. Uh, and I can provide, you know, guidance, and uh, you know, maybe one day I'll be a leading authority on fingernail clippers. And even just to buy these ones, I looked up some fingernail clipper guides, which, um, I don't know, it may or may not surprise you to know, 
um, there are a great number of on the internet already. It's like a big thing. Finger, there's a lot of different fingernail clippers out there, and there's a lot of people out there ranking them in various ways. My favorite one, this one, the Seki Edge, Seki, S-E-K-I, Edge. It's, um, I think it was only, I thought it would be more expensive for like a really nice one, but it still is only like 15 bucks, I think. I mean, which is, I think, I think this trim one I've been using for a long time was like $6, so maybe that's why it's so uncomfortable. There's a lot of people out there that don't even use fingernail clippers. That's okay. They, um, they just, somehow they get away with biting their fingernails and kind of ripping at them a lot, which I'm fine with, except I think I'm just bad at it. I think I've talked about this before, but it just basically it comes down to me being bad at it and not trying it enough. Like I always say, you got to put in the hours. And I just haven't put in the hours of chewing on my fingernails and ripping at them, uh, mostly because I've... The, I have tried it, and here's what went wrong. First of all, I, I, I bit them, you know? You bite at the edge and you tear at it a little bit, and once you get started, you can tear at it a little more and it tears across. But what happened to me was, it tore across straight into the bed of my fingernail. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that. I know that was probably excruciating to listen to, but that's like some, some Guantanamo torture level. Look, that's awful, right? And I just didn't want ever want that to happen again. Um, and also, the bad part about chewing on your fingernails is it makes your fingertips smell like spit. It's disgusting. And I hate that smell of dried spit. Yeah. I don't like how my fingertips smell bad. I'm smelling them right now. You guys know what I'm talking about? Dried spit? You ever been into like a... Like a marching band room? When all the trumpet players and... and and trombonists and t tuba players have just gotten finished cleaning out all their valves. It's not a great smell, but you can try it on your own, on your own fingers if you want. Mm -hmm. did, I ever, did I ever tell you guys about how I played the French horn? The marching French horn? What was it called? The mellophone. My favorite thing about marching band was, without a doubt, the fact that I got to wear got to wear that amazing uniform. I'm just a sucker for a uniform, I think. I think maybe that's why I tried joining the Air Force once. Didn't work. I didn't get accepted, don't worry. My life would have turned out totally different if I had joined the Air Force, but it didn't work, it didn't work out. Have I told that story before? I can't remember what I've talked about in previous podcasts. Somebody write up a basic synopsis of all the topics I've talked about in the previous however many podcasts there have been. And that'll really help me, thank you. No, don't actually do that. Don't actually do that. I know most of you, I know most of you were not even considering it, but I feel like there might have been someone considering it, and I want you to promptly unconsider it. Anyways, I was in marching band, I was in middle school, and my sister was in high school, and her high school had such a lousy marching band they were for some reason recruiting middle schoolers how's that even work i guess they just need more people they just need more people out there on the field if you want to do good in competitions i feel like i guess there's just some minimum number of people you need if you just got 12 people out there you can't do any cool formations you know get good 20 30 people out there it doesn't matter if they're middle schoolers it doesn't even really matter if they're playing well throw a, throw a, a mellophone in their hands it's loud, it makes some noise. It, you're so much better than before, I guess, because I was very frustrated that, why, that's why I wanna know, why did I agree to join the marching band and then not let them, uh, like, just like everything else in my life, I was letting people walk all over me. Look, I was first chair clarinet in middle school, and then I joined that marching band. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at music. I can play first chair clarinet, and they're like, yeah, welcome to marching band. Here's a mellophone. I was like, but I'm pretty good at clarinet already. You want me to learn a whole new instrument? I've never even touched a brass instrument in my whole life before. Plus, I'm only a little middle schooler. Like, hey, play the mellophone. It's loud. It's big. It's flashy. So a mellophone is it's a marching version of the French horn, but it's it basically looks like a big, fat trumpet. It's like one step down from a, a baritone, right? Is that a thing, too? A baritone? Anyways, 
big fat trumpet. It was heavy. My arms got strong that summer. They got, they've gotten weak again since then. Maybe I should hold up more mellophones for hours at a time. Yeah, we would just stand there. We practiced on the parking lot. We had dots drawn out. And we would just stand there holding the trumpet. We weren't even playing. We just, uh, what I call a trumpet, holding the mellophone up. Just your arms would go numb. Just walking around, practicing our steps. Memorizing the formations, moving around. People counting. I don't even know. It all. It's all like some weird hazy blur. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I don't know. I, I mean, I learned how to play the mellophone a little bit. Basic songs. I think the songs for marching band are intentionally pretty easy. So that everyone can play them, right? They're not super complicated. And if some, if some complicated section comes in, it's probably not... Uh, I mean, you can kind of just skip every other note. If, if you're like a guy like me, just some little middle schooler they put in there just to fluff their numbers and fluff the sound a little bit, just play every other note and play it loud. You kind of blend in and it'll still be better than you not being there. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much what happened to me. Still not sure why I said yes to that. It's weird. I, I'd like to, I'd like to be a fly on the wall, you know, if I, if I could like travel back in time and like watch things that happen to you, watch them again, I want to see, I don't even know how I was approached about the option of being in a high school marching band when I was in middle school. Was it my sister that asked me? Was it like a, the band director somehow sent me a letter, an email, a telegram? Who, who, who asked me that? And what did they say to convince me? I probably thought at the time that I'm pretty sure I was, when I said yes, I was probably a hundred percent convinced that I was going to be able to play clarinet, but no, clarinet's too quiet. Nobody can hear it from the bleachers. Got to get those big brass instruments. I don't think we went into any cool competitions or anything. We went to competitions. I remember being at those marching band competitions and watching other bands do amazing stuff where those lines of people, you know, that we call them band members, the color guard, you know, all that, the, oh, oh man, the, what's it called? The, the director, the band director. Who's the, who's the person with the, that big weird baton, the scepter guy who stands up at the front and moves the scepter around that weird hypnotic motion, but he, the scepter, <laughs> He or she, you know, they have like the biggest, craziest hat and the biggest, they have like a cape and stuff and, oh, they're crazy. I do like the uniforms. I think that's really, I think that was a big part of it. <laughs> now, I like going to the marching band competitions and, uh. We we got to go to all, got man. I went to all the. I was in high school. And I went. I mean, I was in middle school. I went to all the high school football games because we had to play, in. You know, you know, we'd sit in the bleachers and play, and then go do a halftime show. What was with my life? That was my, that was my eighth grade year, of middle school. I guess I didn't have any friends or anything to do, huh? If I was doing all this weird high school stuff, I didn't know any of those people. None of those people in high school were my friends trying to figure out if there were other high middle schoolers there they'd roped in I don't know why I'm talking about this for so long it's just like some really weird mysterious part of my life I can't really piece together completely <sighs> mm -hmm. so I went to middle school and I remember one of I feel like I've said this already oh, I'll just say it again look I remember I think I don't think we we're walking in lines anymore, but we'd walk in groups from like class to class or no, not class to class, but for lunch, we'd walk in a group like, Hey, like the whole class is going to lunch now or something. Right. No, maybe not. Anyways, it doesn't matter. And I remember walking cause we have to go outside to get to the cafeteria. And I remember walking out there and just seeing like the sunshine and stuff. And I remember cr having this idea, like, I wish I could just sit out here and play Pokemon on my DS. I'm confident I've said this before. And then watch everyone else go to school and class and just like, and they would see me and they would see me and know that I had nothing I had to do. I could just sit around and do nothing all the time. Just do whatever I want. See, that's the key. Just be able to do whatever they, I wanted. 
that's the cool thing. Like some level of freedom, you know, the, just that nasty feeling of being stuck to the schedule, being marched around like lunchtime, third period, fourth period. You have to sit here. You have to learn this now. Ugh, that crushed my soul a little bit. I don't know why I always imagine myself sitting around playing Pokemon or something, but that's just, that's, I guess that's what I thought I would do. I don't know why I would have been at a school. I guess because my little, you know, middle schooler brain couldn't imagine, you know, I didn't have a car or anything. I guess I still imagine myself getting on the school to go to, I mean, getting on the bus to go to school every day, but then just having the freedom to do whatever I want. And at that point, whatever I wanted was sitting around playing Pokemon. I get, and the cool thing is, that's kind of where I, I've worked really hard, and that's kind of, I mean, I've worked hard to get to that point. That l weird little fragment of a dream I had while walking to lunch in middle school, that's where I've gotten. No, I don't sit around middle schools playing Pokemon, but I sit around now doing whatever I want to my own schedule now. Which is pretty cool. You can achieve your dreams, boys and girls. It might take you, how old are you in eighth grade? Eight, not eight. Well, I'm saying it might take you like 15 years, but, and you might not even realize you get there until years after you get there, but it's cool. Like I, I, I think I really, I think I really like having no schedule, you know? I can eat lunch at any time, go to bed at any time. It's just a good feeling. I don't know if it's absolutely the best thing for me, right? I would think maybe I would get, maybe, I don't know. See, it's really hard to say if, if I would get more done or be more productive, whatever productive means, if, you know, if I had like a schedule, but I think I would really be less happy on a schedule. I think I'll just keep doing things this way for now. I don't know. It's okay to think about things and not come to a conclusion for sure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> My coffee's cold. Can I? Would you be upset if... Would it... Do you think it would be artificially fluffing my podcast numbers? View my sound views? I mean, my time length count numbers? If I go and refill my coffee without pausing it? What do you think? Tell me. Why aren't you saying anything? Sometimes it's a little bit excruciating that you guys can't talk back, but sometimes it's better that way. I'll be right back. Fresh, fresh mugga. And heard in England they call, do they really call tea a cuppa? They just call it a cuppa? Well, this is what I call a mugga. And it's good for you. I don't have my coffee maker on the floor anymore. And I don't have Fanta in the fridge anymore. I'm a changed man. I've been eating mostly, I've been eating mostly um, microwaved frozen foods, sometimes the occasional sandwich. I've been making some veggie burgers. Veggie burgers are weird because I, whenever I, people, there's a strange amount of people that ask me if I'm vegetarian whenever I cook up a, a vegan or vegetarian, whenever I cook up, when they, when they find out that I'm cooking veggie burgers. Uh, but, but no. I guess, is that just like a thing that's typically that only vegans or vegetarians eat? And that just must be a stereotypical food that th throws up some, some flags. I don't know. I mean, I put mayonnaise and cheese on them too. That's not vegan, is it? Don't, doesn't mayonnaise have eggs in it? Cheese has dairy? I don't know what the definitions of vegan and vegetarian are exactly anymore. It all kind of gets all swimmy in my head. Sorry, I was throwing something away, but... It's just... It's, the veggie, veggie patties are pretty good, right? 
I like I, you f- I fry them in the frying pan. I cook them. Frying sounds unhealthy, so I just say I cook them in the frying pan, in the cooking pan, with a little bit of olive oil in there, and they get a little bit of crunchy on the outside, which is a good consistency. I guess to make them even a little bit better, I could put lettuce on them on the sandwiches too, but uh, like having a head of lettuce is that's a that's a big responsibility that I'm not sure I'm ready for. I'm just not sure. So I put mayonnaise on the bottom bun, put the cooked crispy on the outside veggie patty on top of that, and then I used to put Munster on top of that, but lately I've been doing provolone right on top of that. I, I, I cook it five and a half minutes on one side, cook it five and a half minutes on the other, and then I flip it again so the hot, the freshly hot side is on top, and then I slide that on top of the bun and then put the cheese on top of there so that hot side that's just been face down in the, in the pan is immediately melting that provolone cheese. And then the top side of the bun has the um, the Dijon mustard, the uh, the great poupon. I pop that top bun down on top, and I have two veggie patties, and uh, it's good for me, right? Uh, it, they've got carrots, they've got peas in there, and then like a bunch of other brown mishmash of mush that I'm assuming is also vegetables or some sort of cosmic filler. That for just holding the peas and the the carrots together, but all I'm happy about, what I'm very happy about, is it doesn't taste like peas and it doesn't taste like carrots. Peas and carrots are some of my least favorite vegetables. I do really enjoy broccoli. I do enjoy Brussels sprouts. I do enjoy celery, which is a big new thing for me. I used to not really like celery at all for a big portion of my life, and if there was even the slightest little chunk of celery in like a salad or something, not that I had a ton of salads. I, well, the problem is I didn't go out of my way to eat lots of salads, but sometimes I was served a salad by my dear mother or something like that, and if there was like even the tiniest little chunks of celery in there, it, the flavor seemed to just to corrode away with the whole thing, and I could taste something like, no, there's celery in this salad, and I would throw the salad at the ceiling in my mind, but really I would just end up choking it down because I was, I was a good boy. I was a good boy. Anyways, I don't remember what I was saying. Did I go on a tangent? Oh yeah. So I'm oh yeah, I make veggie patties. Um, frozen meals. I have some frozen pizzas. But I bought some of those, but then but they're like I thought they were like little personal pizzas, but then they were like way too small. Like they're the box is a certain size. I was like, yeah, this box yeah, but then they don't even take up like half the box. They're tiny in there. Very deceitful. It's like they're not even worth the trouble of heating them up for a little, like, silver nickel-sized pizza. I mean, they're a little bit bigger than that, but they're, like, wimpy, thin, disappointing, just frustrating to eat because you cook them, and then the crust gets all tough and chewy, and you're just, like, wrestling with this little pizza, and you're like, I just want to eat. I just want to have some food in my belly. I was hungry, and now I'm wrestling with this little pizza, and it's getting everywhere. Not worth it. I've been getting into these bowls, you know, just bowls of like chicken, Alfredo, broccoli, these um, pork Cuban inspired bowls. I like those. They're like three or four dollars per bowl, which I feel like is decent for a meal. Probably way more expensive than it would be if I was actually cooking for myself. But that for some reason really drains my soul of all its energy at some points. One time I, I still have one more box of, of macaroni over there. Because I bought two boxes of macaroni. I thought, yeah, I'm a big boy, I'm hungry. I'll get two boxes of macaroni. But then I, I thought, I was like, maybe I should just make one. Because it says something about servings on there. I just, so I have a big pot. I use the big pot that I used to make that, that walnut ink. Which I think maybe is not a good idea. But it seems clean. But I don't know, maybe there's like bad nutrients that were seeping out of the metal into my mac and cheese. Nothing that I noticed. But sometimes there are things that you don't notice that... You know, like lead poisoning and asbestos and walnut carcinogens and stuff like that. Anyways, so I made a big pot of macaroni. I even, you know, sliced some hot dog slices in there. And it it was, it took a while, but it was really delicious. But what really just put it over the edge for me is not worth it, which I really was on the fence about. What really put it over the edge for me is just all the cleanup it took. I had to clean this huge pot. 
all this nasty mac and cheese. Then I had to clean the my plate of all this nasty cheese. Cheese is not the nicest thing to clean up, right? It's just not. And then I had to clean like like I use a measuring cup for the for the milk and it's just like mac and cheese. Like that's a pretty basic thing, right? That's pretty simple as far as cooking goes. And even that uh, was very discouraging to me when I can just microwave something or, or very simply fry it up. And and like these plates I use to eat my veggie burgers off of, I probably use them six or seven times before I wash them because nothing gets on them but breadcrumbs. I mean, I wipe them off so that because I'm deathly I'm deathly afraid of cockroaches. I wipe them off. Actually, I, I take that back. I have been cleaning them pretty good. My main thing is I don't leave. I just don't leave it lying around. And I vacuum a lot because I'm so afraid of roaches because I don't want, like, if I... Because I know how nasty we are. We, we're, like, eating all the time and there's, like, crumbs popping out of our mouth and flying across the room and stuff and little droplets of this and driplets of that flying, you know, aer aerialized and atomized and it's, like, spraying everywhere. There's probably germs and pits of sugar, you know, sprinkling out across the room. So I just, I vacuum a lot because I know there's stuff everywhere that the roaches know how to find and you know, down in the little crooks and crannies and they stick their little feelers in there and their little nasty little tongues and they slurp it up and I walk into the room and they scare me to death. I almost step on them. My heart jumps up through my earlobes and I'm just about to die. So I vacuum a lot just because I'm scared of cockroaches. And every time after I see a bug or a cockroach for about four years, or maybe four days, for some amount of time, I think that every little speck or thing out of the corner of my eye that I see is a bug, right? It, it really harms me psychologically. I don't know why I have such a weird problem with bugs. Was there something that happened in my childhood that traumatized me with bugs? Like, I can't think of anything. Nobody, like, pranked me with by putting a bunch of bugs in my sleeping bag at camp, you know, when I was eight years old, or I didn't, you know, get attacked by, like, a swarm of bugs, or I didn't, no one, like, made me eat one, or, like, I don't remember anything bad happened. I didn't see a scary bug movie when I was little. I don't know what the deal is. I'll try to think about it. I mean, I'd, I'd probably try not to think about it some more. <laughs> Every time I, I mean, I live in the, I live in this house all by myself. So most of the, the, the rooms, you know, the the light, the, the rooms get dark at night, and some of the light switches are not in the most convenient places. Like they're kind of far in to the room, so I like kind of stand at the door of the room and I lean. It's just pitch black in there, right? Maybe I need night lights, but no night light. Lights attract bugs. It's bad. I kind of lean into the room and reach into the light light switch and hit the light switch and lean back ex kind of half expecting the 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 flood of light to reveal a, some awful pile of you know bugs swarming across my bed or something or some big you know kafka-esque roach you know perched up against the wall up in the corner like man-sized i fully expect it in my mind i can't help it help it helped it or just even some little roach lonely just kind of frozen in the floor you know Kind of in one of those, if I don't move, he can't seize me, see me sort of things. But I'm scared, man. I gotta move somewhere cold where they don't have bugs like um, the Yukon, maybe. Do they have openings in the Yukon? I'm realizing. Even though I come out here and like, I like say I like going outside and stuff, I really spend most of my life inside. But I like the option of going outside. I like being able to go outside. I don't like, sorry, I think I was just messing with this and it's probably making a weird noise. I don't like feeling cooped up, right? You want to be able to go outside and just look at the sky and go back inside and not have to worry about like, like yelling kids and you know, like your neighbors smoking out there and stuff. Even though I don't usually do that, I still like just knowing that I can. You know, not f it's all about the feeling and whether you, you think you're cooped up or not. You know, like if someone, if I had been living in that other apartment still and someone had told, somehow psychologically convinced me 
that I actually wasn't cooped up and I did have a porch out there. Wait, this is just some weird mind game. Even if I thought I had a porch and I could go outside. Oh, actually, I lost my own train of thought. Ah, oh, forget about it. Forget about it. Don't you worry about it. I'm not worried. You're not worried. My coffee's already kind of getting cold too fast. Or maybe, maybe my mouth is getting more calloused to extreme temperatures. Maybe I've been talking longer than I think I have. Also, I think I'm gradually getting... I'm getting better at eating spicy things, slowly but surely. For the longest time in my life, I was just not down with spicy things. I'm like, why do you guys enjoy eating these spicy foods? It physically hurts, right? I like eating. I like the, the feeling of contentment and fullness in my belly. And I like the feeling of like the textures in my mouth and, and the taste, the flavors, right? But what I don't like is the physical pain from the chemicals of spicy foods burning my mouth. What's the deal with that? And, um... But what is the deal with that? Do people who really like spicy foods not feel extreme pain from them as much as people who are more sensitive to it? Or do they like that pain? Or is the extra quote-unquote flavor that, the, that that pain comes with just worth it? Also, let me go on Hot Ones. If you guys know Hot Ones, if you guys know them, tell them to get me on there, even though I'm probably not popular enough. What do I have to do to go on there? I just really, really like chicken wings. And I can probably make some funny faces or something when I eat the spicy stuff. I'm good at funny faces, right? I'll even shave for them. I'll shave. But I just really... Do you have to pay for the hot wings? That's what I want to know. I'll pay for them. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I probably don't have anything worth talking about. It's a problem. There, that the interviewer guy, I don't watch much YouTube because I have problems with YouTube. But that interviewer guy is good at, I think he's pretty good at interviewing, right? He's like, he like digs up the dirt. But not bad dirt, but interesting conversational dirt. Something that people actually be interested in talking about. And you can tell when he asks a question sometimes, and the person he's interviewing is like, oh, dang, oh, didn't think you'd, anyone would ever ask me about that. But yeah, I'm happy to talk about that, right? That's a good kind of interviewer, instead of just asking, like, cookie-cutter questions. I like that. Boy, imagine how cool this podcast would be if I ever looked up anything and recorded it. You know, just let me, you know, like, a look up. Open up Wikipedia. Turns out the typhoon Nabi was a powerful typhoon that struck southwestern Japan into September 2005. Did you, did you guys know that? Look at that. <gasps> I just add a little bit of content to the content free podcast. You never know what'll hit you in, hit you here. I have been listening to. Have you guys ever heard me? say how much I dislike audiobooks I've given them another chance I've officially given audiobooks another chance give me a break I gave them a I gave them a break for about 10 years maybe uh, six years I've been listening to a short history of nearly everything I think that's what it's called by Bill Bryson who is who is an American guy, I'm pretty sure, by context clues I've gathered that. But the, the narrator is a British guy, which has been a little bit confusing at some points, because I, fa I fail to connect these two, or disconnect these two things in my mind sometimes. Because sometimes he mentions things about growing up in America, but I'm like, this, is, this guy clearly did not grow up in America. He's so British. But anyways, it's a pretty good book. I'm about five and a half hour, 15 and a half hours into it. I think there's like 18 hours total. and But when I've, I've realized that audiobooks are perfect for the mind-numbing doldrums of video editing, which have been... Video editing has been like really getting me down sometimes lately because it's just like so boring. Sometimes I watch TV shows, but then I get discouraged by how much TV shows are slowing me down because 
I find I realize that I'm like looking at the TV shows too much instead of just listening to them. But then I realize that like an audiobook is pretty much just a TV show I just listened to, right? And sometimes my mind wanders and I don't realize what's going on for a little bit, but I've just I've just I've just come to terms with the fact that maybe that's okay. And sometimes I click back if I miss something. Uh, but so far it's been going okay. It's been going okay. And I'm not about to endorse Audible again by any stretch of imagination. I I, I said Audible was bad once. Uh, how many years ago was that? Drawing, drawing, what the video was that? Drawing a big mandala. Am I typing really loud? That was four years ago, drawing a huge mandala video when I said Audible was bad because they charge you a month monthly fee and they charge you for a book for each book after your first one per month. That's double dipping. I don't agree with that. So I still don't like Audible because of that. But yeah. Audiobooks in general. I'm not completely not completely bashing anymore. I mean, I, w I was never bashing them for other people, but just me personally, I could never really... just bug me. just bug me. For a lot of things, like, they don't, they don't seem to work as well for drawing still, because I, my mind wanders too much while drawing, which makes me wonder how I ever got away with saying that I listened, you know, when I was doodling in class. I wonder if I really was paying attention. I think it helps when the person is there. And it's not, like I say, not a disembodied voice. When the person is there, they're physically there talking to you, somehow my mind attaches and can hang on to what they're saying a little bit better. Even if it's a video of a person talking, it's a little bit easier for me to listen to what they're saying than if it's just like a picture and then some recorded voice. I don't know why. I don't know if there's any scientific basis or um, you know, evidence for that, but I stand behind that conjuncture, the hypothesis, that witchcraft. I do. Um, okay, I'll list off a few things that I've been really enjoying in my life recently. A few of them are um, very obvious, like I like coffee. Um, these fingernail clippers I've been enjoying. I still really enjoy toothpicks, and I'm thinking that I should learn to enjoy floss as much as toothpicks, but I... The floss kind of comes back to the whole chewing on my um, fingernails things, which is I can't really figure out how to floss without getting some spit on my fingers. I think I'm maybe just bad at it and I should practice a little more. Does anyone else hear floss? And do they do it without getting any spit on their fingers? Because I, I never feel like I can just sit around flossing casually because it always get, makes my fingers nasty and spitty. And does it, is it just my spit that smells bad when it dries? Is there something wrong with me? Do I have halitosis or something? Is it my coffee breath? Is my coffee spit that smells bad? Should my spit smell fine? I'm not sure. Just I'm just putting the questions out there. Mm. Uh, some other things I've been enjoying. These two pairs of pants I got from J. Crew. Currently, really, my only pair of pants that I can wear anymore. I had three other pairs of pants that all kind of gave out at the same time, which was a huge blow to my wardrobe. So I need to go pants shopping again. Maybe my least favorite kind of clothes shopping. Definitely pants shopping. Not maybe, definitely. I had like a 40% off coupon, you know, for J. Crew, so I bought two pairs of pants. And uh, amazingly, they're both incredible pairs of pants that I wear all the time. I wear them to bed. I really love pants. I love wearing them. You know, everyone always makes jokes about like, uh, pants, you know, they're always joking about, you know, how when they get home, the pants come off, you know, like, if I could, you know, they're like, I would wear, I would never wear pants again, and, uh, like, I can't really tell if these people really do take off their pants as soon as they get home, and if they sit around without pants on all the time and stuff, uh, but, or if it's just like a, like a, like a joke, like some meme, like, how much people say they love bacon and stuff, do people really like bacon that much? Do people really sit around without their pants on that much? Like, it's not that... Do, do they just take off their pants because they can? I don't know. All I'm saying is, I really like wearing pants. Like, I much prefer wearing pants to not wearing pants. Even if even if I can take off my pants, which I can all the time since I live at home, alone, you know? 
and, and I sleep with pants on. I do everything with pants on. I just really like how they feel on my legs. They're incredible. Maybe you guys just have bad pants. Have you considered that? Maybe get some good pants. Maybe you're not good at pants shopping. I, I don't like pants shopping, but maybe I'm just good at it. I don't know. Maybe I have just good, maybe maybe I just have good legs for pants. And, hey, and if you don't want to wear pants, hey, don't wear them. It's fine. I'm not saying what you should do. I'm just saying pants are good for me. And there was a point when I didn't sleep with pants. For like five years, I didn't sleep with pants on. But now, suddenly, just one night I lay down and suddenly my legs didn't, I didn't like the feeling of my legs touching each other. So now I have to wear pants all the time. No, I don't have to. I want to. And drink coffee. And use toothpicks and, and clip my fingernails. I would, I would clip my fingernails every single day if I could. But you know how it gets when you clip your fingernails too much. They start going back onto the, the beds. And uh, that's just excruciating. That's bad. I'm thinking of doing a thing. Doing a thing called a Peter Packet, right? My friend gave me an idea, or put this, put the seed for this idea in my head. Tell me what sort of things you'd be more most interested in. Doing like a signed series of objects, right? A signed series of, like, one, like, like, how do we say this? Like, it'd be like, one of 300, right? It, like, one, like, a one-time run, where I, like, get some pins, maybe some patches, and, like, an embroidered... Like, I want to do t-shirts, but everyone wears different size t-shirts. And then I, like, package themselves, package them, so maybe I'll do, like, a beanie or something, right? What type of Peter draws merch do people like, right? So I pack up, package them up, you get like like three different types of things, like a pin, a patch, and a hat, for example, right? Then I package it all up, and I, I put some, like I autograph it, or maybe I graph, autograph like the hat or something in there, you know, so it's got like that personal touch, and I put like one of 300 or whatever, you know, maybe it's maybe 235 of 300 that way, you know, you're getting something unique, right? Because you want to get something unique, and it's... You know, I only do that specific Peter pack once. And then I just charge like a whole lot for it, right? Like 40 or 50 bucks. Would you pay 40 or 50 bucks to get like three things like that unique? Because that would make me really rich if I went to the work of doing it. And people bought it. I would have to do a lot of shipping, though. I think I would be willing to do it. Because I feel like I can get pins and patches for only a little bit if I buy, like, a few hundred of them at a time, right? Those little kind of things like that. I think it's a good idea. I'm just talking through my business ideas with you. Let me know, let me know what you think I can do to get super rich. I appreciate it. All right, you're good friends. You're really good friends. All right. All right, see y'all later. I'm going to go... Get my third cup of coffee now. Numero trace. All right, y'all have a good day. All right, bye. I love you guys. You're doing good. You're beautiful. And uh, your eyes. I like your eyes too.